The time has come to finally review the film where the king will rise. Yo dudes, the empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. Hey everyone, Luke Immerse Prime here, so it is time for a brand new movie review today and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing what is of course a 2014 monitor film directed by Gareth Edwards and this is a reboot of a franchise originating in Japan made by the company Toho and is the first film in of course Legendary's Monsterverse franchise and this film, of course, is all about of course a very popular kaiju monster, and kaiju, of course, is Japanese for strange beast. And that film, of course, is non other than 2014's Godzilla. So, now this is the 30th film in the Godzilla franchise, and also the second one to be completely made by a Hollywood studio, and was directed by Gareth Edwards. So, how was this film made then? So, originally, of course, um, there was plans for a trilogy of Godzilla following the release of a film from the TriStar Pictures in 1998, but it was cancelled due to that film's poor reception, and rightfully so. So, as a result of this, of course, that trilogy was scrapped, and then after this, Yoshimoto Bano in 2004 wanted to, to make a Godzilla 3D film called Godzilla 3D to a Max, but sadly, however, plans for that fell through due to financial issues, he also wanted to make a sequel to his film from 1971, which was Godzilla vs. Hedora, but sadly he passed away in 2017, so rest in peace. Then in August 2009, in, there was rumours surfacing about Legendary in talks with Toho to make an, a new American Godzilla film, and this of course was, was then confirmed um, in the following years. It was officially announced in March 2010, and Gareth Edwards was announced to be the director, and... Then after this, of course, filming began in, in March 2013 in the United States and Canada and ended in, in July 2013. When it comes to reception this film got, it was theatrically released on May 16, 2014 to generally positive reviews from critics who praised the direction, visual effects, music, cinematography, respect for source material and performances. The film was also a box office success, grossing $529.1 million dollars worldwide against a production budget of $660 million, print and advertisement costs of $100 million, and a break-even point of $380 million. This film's success prompted Toho to produce a reboot of their own called Shin Godzilla in 2016. And then this also awesome inspired Legendary to continue this franchise in a shared universe called the Monsterverse. When it comes to my reaction to this film then, so... I saw this film at the cinema in 2014, and when I saw the film, I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed it, and I rewatched it a few times, and I rewatched it last night for this review. And to this day, I think it's a really good movie. So, what is this movie about then? So, so of course, um, in this film, an American soldier attempts to return to his family while caught in a crossfire of an ancient rivalry between, of course, Godzilla and two parasitic monsters known as Mutos. So, now, when it comes to what I think is good about this film then, so, I think it has a really good cast of actors, so, the main character of this is the soldier, Ford Brody, who's played by Aaron Taylor-Johnson, and I think that Aaron Taylor-Johnson did a really good performance as Ford Brody, in my opinion, as him. Uh, he did a really good job playing him and made him a likeable character, in my opinion, and I really enjoyed him in this movie. I mean, my favourite role of his, of course, is Kick-Ass, but I still think he was really good in this film as Ford Brody, and... In addition to that, I also as well definitely really love the casting of my favourite Japanese actor Ken Watanabe as Dr. Ishiro Serizawa. Ken Watanabe is an absolute legend and I definitely consider Serizawa to be my favourite live action role of his. And I also love as well how his name is a hallmark to several things related to the original Godzilla film from 954. Because his first name Ishiro is named after of course the original film's director Ishiro Honda. And his surname is named after a scientist who killed Godzilla in the original film, who is, of course, Dr. D. Suksurizawa. So I definitely really love that like, tribute to, to, of course, boss who were involved in the original film with his character. And his character, in my opinion, was great. He was really interesting and likeable and well-written. And a character I really enjoyed watching the scenes of, because Ken Watanabe always still the screen, in my opinion, in the film he's in. He's a phenomenal actor. I also, as well, definitely liked um, Elizabeth Olsen in this as Elle Brody, who, of course, is Thor's wife. 
I think she was really good in this with what she was given to, in my opinion, as well. And it's funny that she's Miss Angela Johnson because he, after this bit, of course, been Age of Ultron, not played husband and wife, but brother and sister because they play Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. I also, as well, like the addition of Sally Hawkins, a Dr. Vivian Green, who, of course, is Serizor's right hand assistant. I thought she was really good, in my opinion, in this. And and she definitely had really good chemistry with Ken Wanabe and their scenes together, working together. So I definitely really like that. She had really good chemistry with, with the cast in this. And Sally, Sally Hawkins is a great actress. And when it comes as well to Ford's parents, I definitely also love their casting as well. For example, I love the casting of Brian Cranston as his father, Joe, in this film. Brian Cranston is one of my favourite actors of all time, and he played Joe really well, in my opinion, in this film. And and he was definitely, in my opinion, a great casting, especially because he's a big fan of Godzilla. So I love how, how Gareth Edwards casted fans of the original franchise in this. And in this film, he was so good, in my opinion. And I think the opening scene, of course, was, was very heartbreaking, thanks to his amazing performance, in my opinion. Did a really great job playing Joe Brody. And I also, as well, have a casting of Julia Binoche as Sandra, who, of course, is, is, um, is, is Ford's mother. I thought she was really good in this, even though she only appears at the start of the film because of a tragic scene that happens where she thought she gets killed off in, of course, the disaster at the Janjira nuclear plant. Um, it was... It was definitely, in my opinion, a really good scene in this, in this what she was given. I think she tried her best what she was given, in my opinion. It's a shame she only appeared at the start of the film, sadly. And there's other bit parts in the film as well, from several actors, you know, like camera appearances and all that. One particular bit part that I definitely really loved seeing in this was that of Gary Chalk at the start of the film as a staff member of the nuclear plant. Gary Chalk, in my opinion, is a great voice actor, and I've seen him appear in several live-action roles, and it was really awesome to see him have a cameo in this film, and Gary Chalk's awesome. I have the honour and privilege of interviewing him on, 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 as well in November 2023, which is definitely a really great privilege and a huge honour. When it comes to other great things about this film then, so one thing that I think is definitely big standout about this film is probably its visual effects, because I definitely think that the siege item was really top-notch, and was definitely, in my opinion, visually stunning. For a film that's 10 years old, in my opinion, it, it's aged really well. Like, I, I think the special effects for the car during this were absolutely spectacular, and in my opinion, they hold up really well. And I know some people may, may criticise that a lot of the scenes take place at night time, but personally I've not got a problem with that because by having scenes take place at night time, it can help CGI aid really well in my opinion. And this one's definitely an example of that. And also as well, oh, they don't even appear just in night time, they also appear in daytime scenes as well, so it's not like they always appear in the dark, is it? No. And I think the CGI in my opinion was great for this film, and the destruction scenes in my opinion were brilliant, especially for Honolulu in Hawaii, like, wow. Definitely, my opinion, visually stunning. And when it comes to Godzilla himself, I definitely really loved how he looked in this film. I love how they took inspiration from his original design by Toho. So, so I love how, how when it comes to that and the characters, they were very respectful to the source material there. And I definitely really love that. And he was played by Morcap by TJ Storm. And I think that TJ Storm did a brilliant job with Morcap for Godzilla in this film. And the Mutors as well were also, in my opinion, really well designed as well. Definitely, in my opinion, pretty scary looking, I must say. Goodness me, they were pretty frightening, I must say. Like, that was just, just definitely brilliant, in my opinion. They were very threatening and very unique, I must say, as well. And I also as well really like the musical score in this film. I thought it was really, really well composed by Alexander Desplat. I think he did a very good job composing music for this film. It was very intense, in my opinion. Just what you need for a Godzilla movie, absolutely. And... I also, as well, think this film has plenty of awesome moments. I've already mentioned the destruction scenes and the fight scenes. One particular standout for the fight scenes for me is probably when Godzilla is able to destroy, um, of course, um, the, it, the female Muto by blasting his atomic down her throat. Like, because when I saw this film at the cinema, guys, when Godzilla did that with his atomic breath, the audience cheered, and I cheered as well, because that was a really epic moment, and definitely helping to preserve the faithfulness to the character by including his atomic breath. Because... Godzilla is not Godzilla without his atomic breath, absolutely. And I love how he had a raw, which appeared to take inspiration from the original raw. We were a bit of a different thing added to it, of course, because it's a different take on the character, of course, which makes sense. But I still think the raw was great, but it was worth, in my opinion, really well done. So I definitely really like that about how Godzilla in this. And also as well, I think the film is also very well paced too as well, because... Even though there may not be much fighting in this film, I will say that they are thankfully spread out, of course, and even the scenes where it's, it's just humans talking, in my opinion, they're great to watch because they're well acted, in my opinion. I've already mentioned Brian Cranston's acting, Ken Watanabe's acting, even Aaron Taylor Johnson's acting. In my opinion, it, it makes it good to watch. I, I will say that, really. Because despite this film being, of course, a kaiju film, 
they still made a great effort to have likeable human characters who are, who are entertaining to watch, which I think is what just what you need for a film, absolutely. And due to, of course, the success of this film, it helped revitalise the interest in Godzilla and, and it increased popular demand for more films to come. And it, of course, inspired Toho to make more films, and I'm really happy about that. Because, I will say that in my opinion, Godzilla is, is at his best when he's made by Japanese production, because he, he of course, originated in Japan with Toho, and they know exactly how to portray Godzilla. And I, I've seen two of their films so far being original film and also Godzilla Minus One. And I love both of them very much. They're probably, in my opinion, Godzilla at its peak. And I can't wait to watch more Toho's Horse Godzilla films. So I'm so glad this film helps revitalise interest in making more films. And of course, it also helps create a successful franchise, of course, too. However, it also brings any bad quality to this film then. So when it comes to a human cast, while I think many of them were likeable characters, some actors I do feel were pretty underused. One example I can say is unfortunately Brian Cranston because... While he was great for what he was given, in my opinion, I really did not like how he only appeared at the start of the film, unfortunately, in like the first half of it. And sadly, of course, he ended up dying, which really sucked. His character died, which was a big shame, really. And it really sucked because the trailers were filming, it looked like he was going to be the main character, not Aaron Taylor Johnson's character, but no. It turns out he was only at the start of the film, and sadly, his character got killed off, which was a big shame because Brian Cranston is one of her characters. It's all a pleasure to see him on the screen, so. It's a shame that his character got killed off in this film, but despite that, he was still great when he was given. The same thing also applies to Julia Binoche as well, because she also only appears at the start of the film too, and sadly her character gets killed off in a tragic scene. I mean, it was well acted, don't get me wrong, but it was still, in my opinion, a shame that she got wasted like that, killed off at the start of the film. It really sucks, in my opinion. But despite that, though, the scene where she dies, in my opinion, was really well acted by Brian Cranston and Julia Binoche, in my opinion. That's what I'll say. And when it comes, of course, to the screen time of the Kaiju themselves, it is true they don't really pay much of a film when you total their total screen time. It's about 8 or 10 minutes, if I remember correctly. But, and I would love to see more of them, absolutely. But, obviously, of course, the film was building up to their first appearance, of course, like you're forced to do in a film, because it's actually the world building and introducing the characters. But, I've not got much of a problem with the lack of screen time because, despite their fight scenes, of course, feeling pretty brief due to the short screen time when you told it all up, it's thankfully, in my opinion, well spread out throughout the film, and that's why I don't have a problem with it. And plus, when I watch the scene with Godzilla, it honestly doesn't feel like it's badly paced, in my opinion, when it comes to all, all low screen time. It honestly doesn't feel like a lack of screen time, in my opinion. That's how I feel about it, really. Because, in my opinion, it's really well paced. And because it's so action-packed, I keep forgetting his screen time, to be completely honest. And just because a character may have a lack of screen time doesn't mean it's a bad character. Like, one of the best examples I can say of a character who barely appears in a film but is still phenomenal is Darth Vader from Star Wars because he's only in Star Wars New Hope for 12 minutes. But his, his scenes are fantastically spread out throughout the film so it doesn't feel like 12 minutes at all. The same thing for me applies to Godzilla in this film, because despite it being about 8 or 10 minutes of screen time for Godzilla, he still appears in lots of scenes throughout the film, and is in my opinion well spread out. And in that, and in that small screen time, he was thankfully faithful and respectful to the source material, because his atomic breath and the raw, sounding similar to the original raw in some cases, and also how he swims in the water as well, was, was also in my opinion well done. So I think this film did a really great job with Godzilla, despite not much screen time. So that's what I'll say really, like the only issues I have is that some actors were unfortunately really underused and and also as well how, how even Godzilla might not have much screen time either unfortunately but but despite this however I think his scenes were well spread out but I would love to see more of it. Thankfully in the next films he had more to do which was which was brilliant so I'm glad about that. Sadly the same couldn't be, be applied for most recent ones for this film which is, which is a big shame. However, if I was to give Godzilla 2014 a score out of 10, I think it's a good film to this day, so I'd still give it to this day for me an 8 out of 10. That's what I'd give it. In my opinion, it's a good film, one of Gareth Edwards' best movies, because I think he's a very underrated, good director, and I think this is a good film by him. So guys, this was me, of course, doing my review for 2014's Godzilla, so you know the drill, guys, be sure to give this video a like, also be sure to leave in the comments what you guys think of Godzilla, if you've seen it, think in the comments below, or what you think of it. Also, be sure to join the team for my press and subscribe is coming in the future, and long live the king of the monsters.